my bad parents slipped on banana peels while they were pregnant. That's why I'm a scrambled egg. But then again, wearing pajama bottoms was never a good idea to the reception dinner soup. My bad parents fed me ice cream and sang me lullabies. Now I can't get the damn songs out of my head. My bad parents took me to see the thunder and the lightning and berated me with noisemakers laughing to themselves about table manners. I asked my bad parents for prostitutes so they fucked me themselves and made me pay them. The mirror is my bad parents and it makes fun of me with the clock. I break the mirror. I go to jail for a very long time. My bad parents fuck me while I'm in jail too. But eventually I'm the one doing the fucking which makes me the bad parents. When they finally let me out, the first thing I do is hit the bars. I mutter to the waitress, What are you doing later, man? Do you want to come home with me? But she ignores me. On the TV, they're showing highlights from today's horse race. One of the horses ran the fastest. All the others were too slow. I've fallen asleep again. I've fallen asleep on your brittle wrist. I always thought that if I fell asleep on your brittle wrist, I'd dream of the water fountain that you have to put a coin into in order to drink from. But there is no water fountain now, and I am not particularly happy. Frankly, I am quite bored, and the thought returns. The scalding open wheel accosts me, death. All that I do in my life, everything that brings me joy, is just the carnival where all the colors cost furious pedantry. Boxes of photographs stinking up the basement twist your neck so the singing morning unlocks crooked, crooked. Listen, yes, the morning, yes, with all of its dew and song, your wrist so brittle, imprinting me with pulse. But listen, Glass beads shattered, spilled onto the floor. Glass beads taking up space on the dustpan. How can it be? How can the song of ricocheting beads compel me more than all of your moans and the taste of your dripping flower, most perfume complete? Imagine me engrossing your behemoth hesitating at the waistband of forever, clutching your fingers covered in drool, and all the while dreaming of glass beads. There will be no mercy. I will burn for drinking, blooming upward, many colors blurring lights, feigning exhaustion, dirty glass, stolen advice. The street at night, as we walk, is high above us but there are higher dizzy still chandeliers failing bulbs we used to know how to replace them we used to have a ladder tall enough 
but we lost it in the move. It was so very poignant when your hair slipped into my mouth. Your dark, thick hair interrupting our sighs with giggles. I can't think about it now. I can't stare into it. My eyes throb blighted by the morning's schlocked, galloping fruit punch through a straw. But I can see your hands flailing across my body, touching me cotter lying on your back for comfort. When you lie in the grass at the park, do you notice when ants crawl upon you or are you too <laughs> lapping up the sun? And when we are cooking, do you listen to the notes that dissect from our knives and hear each one as a masticate. But all of this vitriol isn't exactly for you. I guess it's mostly for the river or trickle, really, that blah through the object of all those Oh my god! Hers. Oh god! Yes, god! I've tasted its waters, this trickle, and found them diseased. I stared at my skin in the pale light of your bathroom while you lay in bed without any clothes on, whimpering for chimneys, and please... And the puffy mirror sewed my skin into clean thorn screams politely. No, but don't unhinge your skin from the cloaked slop crag, log more cadaver, strong black hog, true verge, sea moss, no rack kept, slip born, swelter, pinching shod, bestial, very thoughtful, make his awful vagrant. Yes, oh yes, the smell, yes, the smell, the smell, the as the rot. <laughs> Dawn hoped that day that she would rise to greet a slogan more unique, that the chicken tenders would advertise, caress, that the black girls would find out where the clouds live. Dawn rose. She looked out at the world. Here were the darting squirrels. Here were the cellophanes. The wind still swept across our faces, bringing them unwanted tears. But the birds had all gone. Dawn sighed. She would not be here much longer. Already she could hear her older brother mourning coming up the stairs. She felt she must do something for this world, but she could not decide what. She remembered taking the metro with her mother night when she was a very young girl. She had very much enjoyed it. Her mother had given her a lollipop. She had sat beside morning and he had cuddled her. For years afterward, she thought that a lollipop 
tasted like warm passengers entering and exiting the train. Morning came into the room. How was it? Good? He asked. She nodded. Good, he said. She got up out of her seat and started tidying up a bit. She could hear him making himself comfortable. He took out a novel and leafed through the pages. Morning liked to read thick books with words that didn't make sense. Dawn thought again about the metro and her lollipop, her favorite part, she thought, was the automated voice that came on to tell them when they were nearing a stop.